we established ourselves in 1998 in Nottingham. So some of the slides you're going to see are sort of Nottingham focused. Um, that's where we are still located. And we have moved to other cities um, over those many years. Um, over those years, we have uh, focused on zero emission vehicles to do the transport, the freight around cities. Now, everything you see here today has had to be moved here to get here, especially yourselves as well. Passenger and freight is important to get around. And our main focus is to do that as sustainably as possible. Um, but there's been some challenges on the way, and I thought I'd talk about those challenges, what we did to overcome them, and then look to the future and what we're going to be doing. Um, so as we've mentioned today, we're all here because we care. Um, I love this slide. This is the, the, the blue marble. Um, we have only one of these, and as everybody's explained clearly and concisely with facts, um, we need to change. And that's really my theme of the, uh, uh, the my theme is, is change, basically. Um, so 1998, quite a few years ago, um, we established ourselves with a sort of cycle courier base um, within the city centre of Nottingham. And very quickly we had champions come on board. And those champions are key to change. And luckily we had Boots headquarters on uh, four miles away from the city centre. And they took us on straight away and we replaced six taxis just running. Six diesel taxis just running. And they had ten sites and we transferred those over to um, Cycle Courier Network and set that up very quickly. City Council, um, just across the road from us, um, was very quick to come on board. And for many years we transferred a lot of diesel journey miles to electric. And just recently, I come to the end of the presentation, we just uh, started working with the NHS. Um, so, 2003, we bought four electric vehicles. Now, electric vehicles back then were, well, milk floats, I think. <laughs> but luckily, um, sorry about this, Renault, but Peugeot and Citroën came out with their partner van. Um, 50 mile range, uh, nickel cadmium powered batteries, and we persevered with those. We thought that's the right way to go, so we bought four. And, um, we learnt very quickly how to uh, manage those, um, route plan, and learn the, uh, the limitations so that we're not running out of energy. Um, but it was very limiting at that time. Um, but the drivers and the f were on board. They were regularly um, filling up the hot water bottles in the morning, uh, in the winter times, to de-ice um, and wear the uh, nine layers of clothes. Um, moving on, we sold those um, back about 2007, and this vehicle here is a, a Nemo. Um, the, it's a 58 plate, so 2008. It started its life as a diesel van, and we found a retrofitting company that took the diesel engine out and did, a uh, did us a lithium-ion <coughs> retrofitted vehicle. Um, so yes, we, we were passionate about EVs providing a good solution for freight back then in 2008. Um, the challenges then, there was no on-street charging. Um, we had to do the back-to-base charging regime still. The lithium-ion gave us 80 miles range then, um, and we can opportunity charge. The early batteries, you had to run them right down, and you couldn't charge, or else you'd, you'd blow them up. That was the main problem back then. They had to be run down without overheating them. Um, so no, no on-street charging, so we set up uh, some couriers to charge at home. So they were happy to um, use their home electricity, plug in the three-pin socket, and then charge overnight. So a very slow charge, three-pin so three plug socket. Um, repairing. <laughs> uh, couldn't really take it to a garage then. Um, so I have memories of being underneath that vehicle uh, with a you know, spotlight and rewiring batteries um, with the safe knowledge that I've taken out the right fuses at the right time so that I didn't get, the ba get, the, get a good hairstyle the next day. <laughs> um, yeah, so there was dedication and we've still got that dedication moving forwards. Um, the main model is around city centres, so we're trying to share resources. Um, the space out in city centres are limited. So if we can use cargo bikes, fantastic. They're fantastic to get around. Uh, you interact with the general public more than being an electric vehicle because you're closed off. So moving up to larger vehicles, well, this is a mid-range at the moment, um, we have uh, a place close to city centres where parcels can be dropped off from um, 
diesel vehicles and then we carry those on into the city centre with uh, electric vehicles, zero emission, acting like a, like a parcel bus. Um, a bus is in a positive way, not in a negative way. Um, so just as lots of passengers get on to a, uh, a bus, um, we're doing mixed deliveries. So we're sharing that space, maximising it right to the top so that um, we're maximising our energy going into the, the city centre. Um, the location is key for this. We are uh, repeating this model within various cities and this year has been a fantastic growth. So yesterday we set up six couriers in Birmingham and touch wood, that's all gone very well, second day running. <laughs> Um, but the model is linked to rail as well, um, so I'm very pleased to hear that the rail is um, brought into the conversation. Um, this is a picture in uh, opposite Nottingham's railway station, and every day we've got from Nottingham 130 trains straight into uh, St Pancras. And we work with Intercity Rail Freight, and we do first and last, first and last mile deliveries by cargo bikes and electric vehicles from trains. It makes sense, they're going there anyway. Um, and our future aim is to grow that to more bulk freight. So, incentives to change, and there you go, that word change again. Um, it's great to hear that um, green number plates are coming into, hopefully coming into place, which will possibly mean that uh, local authorities will be able to trial or even use bus lanes for, uh, to incentivise people to use um, uh, electric vehicles. This is a, a short run in Nottingham where ultra low emission vehicles are allowed in and uh, it's uh, yes, yeah, working very well actually so we're very pleased we've been able to use that. Um, and then the London ultra low emission zone. So power to change, so where, where do we get this power from? Um, our experience of using EVs has been a, a challenging one. Um, there's more driver training. Um, you can't just give a keys to the driver and say, there you go, carry on. You do have to spend a bit of time explaining the use of charging, how to charge them at certain points, and how to use the energy whilst, um, so the comfort factor. We advise people to wear, you know, socks, <laughs> double socks, <laughs> to try and um, reduce the impact that, you know, the air conditioning reduces the, uh, the range. Um, but with more and more charging points coming up, then the comfort factor will, will increase. Um, we still do back-to-base charging, um, so anybody using fleets um, will probably have a, a, a site where they can have um, facilities to put charging infrastructure in. We use public charging, um, so if you want that quick 15 minute top up with those rapid charges, they're 50 kilowatt charges in that picture, um, that gives another sort of 30 miles quick range and the driver's off again. By law we have to give our drivers, our employed drivers, comfort breaks, um, so it's a good opportunity there to, to keep um, topping up. We encourage home charging, so where needed, um, if a route does mean that there's an early start and the driver can go home and charge that up and there's facilities there that we can in, um, link into with the home charging grant, um, then that's great. Um, the charging on the street, the public charging, is, is a bit of a challenge. Um, it's a closed network and it's a closed network whereby you go to Milton Keynes, you've got to have one card to use their, their uh, charging points. But then you travel to another city and you've got to have another card. But those co both those cards have a, a monthly charging um, and they also take up room in your pocket. So when you've got 20 charging cards, it's a, <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge. So we're, we're advocates of an open network. If anybody in the room can support this and make it happen, we would love that because it, it is causing us headaches whereby we are doing, thankfully, the battery range has increased, we are doing many more miles now, so we're going to multiple cities, doing lots more miles, but there's a barrier there, and we'd like that barrier to sort of come down and, and allow us to do more miles easier. Um, so anybody doing the infrastructure, we'd like that to be sort of located convenient spots. So we love the motorway services, um, whereby, again, comfort breaks, the drivers can pop in, go and grab a coffee, and by the time they've come out, they've got that extra 30, 40, 50 miles and they carry on um, on electricity. 
but there's a challenge there as well. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's used the electric highway um, motorway services, but um, and also these these charge points. Um, sometimes weather is a challenge. So you get your your app out because you can charge by apps. That's another way of doing it. But the rain's horizontal. The wind is whistling around as well. <laughs> and you're trying to wake your phone up without the rain getting on your, on your app. And you're trying to scan the QR code. And designers of charge points, we would love them to be undercover. Um, as a suggestion, if you go to a petrol station, you're undercover. So why penalise an electric vehicle uh, user? <laughs> um, again, um, why penalise an electric vehicle user when there's only one charge point in one location. You go to a petrol station, there's 20 or 12. There's no queuing, or sometimes <laughs> there is queuing. But more and more people are switching to electricity, electric cars and we're finding that increase in usage, there's only one charging point and there's a queue. And that queue, that's somebody waiting 40 minutes for that person to leave, you've then got to plug in, that's another 40 minutes to charge up. So I've used this slide here um, to sort of try and encourage the idea that there's multiple units in one place so that there's less uh, queuing, there's less frustration where you're getting to three miles and you just want to get that extra charge and you want that security that when you get there, there's going to be a space, you can plug in quickly and go again once you've finished. Um, so strategically placed rapid charges, I think, is, is, is a good way to go. And reliability as well. Um, single chargers, again, uh, they are prone to, um, I, guess, I guess, not 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 work every so often. So when you've got multiple units there, if one's not working, you know that you're heading to a site where there's a good good choice. So uh, just moving on very quickly. Um, we have start started working with uh, sort of medical logistics. So this year, our main growth, or the past four years actually, has been main growth, is within uh, the health industry. Fantastic. We're helping them change to um, move to a, a, a zero emission, low carbon delivery solution. Um, so some of the figures we've seen here today is, uh, is sort of 40,000 um, premature deaths due to sort of air quality. Now, the NHS has done an analysis of how much of their activity is contributing to that. And they've come up with around about 6,500 people that their daily activity for the NHS is causing more customers going to their door. So our aim is to try and reduce the customers, the more, you know, the people with respiratory problems and other health problems going and putting pressure on the NHS. And um, I've got a demonstration here. So this is the BMW i3, um, 94 amp hour range, so we're getting about 120, 140 miles on electric. We've gone for the range extender because in the back of it we carry blood and blood samples. So the range extender just gives us a reassurance that we are going to get to the hospital, get, get to the delivery point. Um, and this has been fantastic. Our customers do like this. They love the... Uh, the uh, the way it looks on the road. It's very compact, lightweight. But if it's good enough for blood, urgent blood, well, then it's going to be good enough for, I'm oh, sorry to say, Mrs. Miggins shopping and that short trip, that short local community trip. And uh, as well as that, we are proving with our supplier, Polar Thermal, um, that there is other ways to move and transport temperature monitored um, items. So your frozen food done by high street shops, uh, they've all got to get that to the store. So that's frozen, we can do chilled, um, but we can do that without having that diesel generator on that big van. And again, that's a hidden pollution in city centres. The chilled transport market is uh, again contributing to a lot of air quality problems in city centres. Um, moving to an EV, um, we've got solutions whereby a large EV can then carry that chilled product safely monitored as well. We've got data monitors, data loggers within each item and that can be delivered 
um, to store safely as well. So very quickly, that's myself, Chris Beattie, and uh, that's been my journey, the first sustainable journey. <laughs>